game it disassociates the relationship you have especially with things like the words yeah it disassociates um, the relationship people have with those words etc but when you take them outside of that and make them be encourage them to be mindful in a different way it creates a whole new experience Eighty percent of our behaviour is governed by um, our unconscious um, behaviours. So when players, when football language, it's called habit. So when they keep training and being repetitive, it's about storing that ability to think without thinking. But I feel that if you are competent in actually acknowledging your um, emotions and managing them you probably don't really need anyone to, to hear you because you'll be skilled in managing that yourself. And I feel that's what it is, that's, it's about empowering the in, individual. So I use the power of football to provide education on racism. So it's, it's just a case of, uh, you know, having discussions that people may not feel comfortable having. So we, we cover terminology, maybe beliefs that we may have about certain groups and where they come from. I think there would have been pressure. I think there's pressure regardless, even if you're at your club. I think with those players, because they're young, I think sometimes they don't even realise what is actually going on and what's at stake. Whereas sometimes the more senior players could feel the pressure more than the younger players. biggest thing for me on a learning curve was about reflecting on my own life in and outside of football and what blew my mind is the experiences that I had that loads of other players had as well um, and as every year went by I'd hear other people talking about their stories their personal stories and I'm thinking well, hold on a minute why isn't there anything out there to support the player in terms of their well-being <laughs> 